Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, whiskey folk. It's uh, Thursday night again, quarter to ten. It's Roy Aquavite. Welcome. And welcome if you're watching on the replay as well. Um, back to my usual time slot. After a fantastic and great fun live stream on Sunday night, we got together to celebrate Ralphie having uh, hit the milestone of 100k. Um, ended up being the busiest uh, live stream that I've ever done. It was absolutely wonderful. I kind of want to spend a minute talking about that a bit later as well. Obviously, I think the reason it was so busy was because of the draw of Ralphie, you know, the fact that it was um, about him. And I'm a wee bit worried that some people stopped by thinking that Ralphie might have actually been in the stream. And of course, he wasn't. Um, but regardless, it was a super successful stream. I got together with uh, three whiskey tubers. Uh, we've got No Nonsense Whiskey, Food Quig, and Scott from the Scotch Test Dummies. But what I think was really cool is that we got and reached out to a couple of fans who were brave enough to step up as well, and Scott Monroe and Welsh Toro, who you'll recognise from the comments and things around YouTube, joined us as well. So it was great fun, and I just I loved having those guys in. A bit later on, we'll kind of have a resume of that, that stream because... What happened is that I ran a, a giveaway, a competition for Ralphie's Whiskey of the Year, the Glen Cadam 15, and uh, I just need to be reminded that that has to be drawn tonight, and I will draw that tonight, and we'll announce a winner. There's been 55 entries up until the point that it closed. Um, but in order to enter, you had to just kind of put in the comments why you feel that Ralphie had affected you or in some way affected your whiskey journey. Um, so... Uh, that happened. If so many people put in um, comments, it was quite phenomenal. Just amazing to see, amazing to read. And um, let's let me check something here. Sorry. Um, yeah, there was just a, such a fantastic outpouring of, of support for Ralphie, some fantastic little anecdotes and things. And I've actually got a couple of them here that I'll, um, I'll share with you a bit later in the feed. Um, but first up, it is actually Burns Night. It's a, it's Rabbi Burns Night. So a wee bit later on, I'm hoping that my wife is going to bring in some of the dinner that we had earlier on tonight. We had a Burns dinner with the kids, and my six-year-old son was given the knife in order to cut open the haggis and things. He had some fun doing that. And just to talk about kind of that whole thing, that haggis concept, what haggis actually is, um, I've kind of no idea why we have that at Burns Night, apart from the fact that Rabbi Burns actually did the poem, um, Gear a Haggis, Addressed to a Haggis. Um, but that's what we tend to have. It's not the only time that we'll eat haggis, but to be honest, it's probably going to be the night that lots of folk, the only night that lots of folk eat haggis. Even Jason Whiskey Wise is out having a Burns Haggis supper tonight, although I'm sure it's a whiskey-sponsored thing. So we'll talk about haggis in a wee bit as well. Um, I also want to talk about 12-year-old whiskies, my favourite 12-year-olds. And the reason for that is that there's been a few times I've mentioned that this or that is in my top 12-year-olds when I haven't really expanded on that, I haven't elaborated. And there's been a few comments coming in saying, well, come on, tell us what they are, tell us what they, your top 12-year-olds are. Um, so I'll share that a little bit later as well. Um, and I also want to kind of talk a wee bit about YouTube and just the fantastic community that we've got going on and talk about the changes that YouTube are making and how that potentially could affect that for some of the content creators on YouTube. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my uh, channel and I'm going to try and call up the, the chat. and see who's in already. Now, I had a wee look earlier, and there was like 20 or 30 people just kind of waiting. So let me pop this out, make it as big as I can make it so I can see you all. We'll do a quick roll call before I get on. And uh, there was no guests tonight, it's just me. And the reason for that is, is that I like having a guest. It's much easier for me, believe me, when I have a guest because I can kind of sit back a bit and relax while they're speaking and things. It takes a bit of pressure off, adds a bit of fun, adds a bit of interest for you guys as well. But I'm just, I'm just trying these things and we'll refine it as we go on. But I was thinking that if I go live twice a month, 
second Tuesday, sorry, second Thursday and uh, last Thursday of the month, for example, which is how it's shaping up. Um, I thought, why not have a guest or two guests or whatever, have a guest show one of those slots and the other one try and do it solo. Because if you're going to join a live feed, so much of it, and I know I appreciate I'm sitting monologuing to you now, <laughs> so much of it is about the interaction. And if I don't have a guest, it means that I can reach out to you guys and 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 they uh, interact with you. But I can see right now, uh, oh well, there's 83 people in, so it might be tough to interact with you. I'm just going to... Um, the Whiskey Rev is running shotgun for me tonight. No Ransom's Whiskey Vin is also running shotgun. And the two of those guys will help me a little bit and just try and tidy up um, links and comments and contributions and questions and things like that. If you've got an absolute burning question, I know no, it seems like I'm asking for money, but it's not. It's kind of how that function works. If you've got a question that absolutely needs to be answered, use the Super Chat function. I guarantee you I will not miss any of those comments or questions. Um, so let's do a quick roll call as I go down and find any highlighted questions for me. Uh, Scott Monroe, Kilted Moose is in again. Fantastic to see you, Scott. Yap Croit, superb. Mott Review, evening all. Evening, Jason. Good to see you in as well. No answer. Whiskey Malted Montreal, Everwind. You're a stalwart, Everwind. It's fantastic to see you. Whiskey, Jason. Travis, Travis Suthers. Thank you, my friend. Santa Cruz, and wow, superb. Good to see you in, Chris. Um, Raster, superb. Tony Evans, yeah, again. Welsh. Now, Welsh was one of the guests on my uh, Ralphie stream on Sunday night. Uh, it's the first time so many people had seen Welsh's face. And uh, yeah, I watched it back after the event and I just, I, I feel really pleased that I was the guy that managed to get Welsh on a stream. That's fantastic. Kevin Bryant, superb. Everest, we've just had a slight exchange, a, a, an exchange in the comments there, Everest. Um, Everest asked me a question and he said, Roy, when you pronounce Clinleash, and he's quite right, I say Clinleash, whereas Ralphie will say Kleinleash. Um, the difference between the two are so subtle that it's almost not worth talking about. And I know that I'm kind of getting this reputation as being the pronunciation police, when actually the point of my videos was like to chill out about it, not to care so much. But if I say Klein leash fast, I tend to say Klein leash, so that's my fault. Klein leash, Klein leash doesn't really matter. I hope that covers that for you, Everest. Sean Galloway, good to see you in, Sean. Jez Batty, good to see you back. OJ for Hire, uh, the Whiskey Rev, my buddy. Mark, Mark Broda, there was a fantastic video just um, went out live tonight on the Scotch for Dummies channel, and it was just a little 60 second clip of. Mark and myself at the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society in Edinburgh. And uh, while we were there, I kind of goaded them into trying haggis. And I made an agreement that they could order anything that they wanted, and I would order haggis. And if they liked it, they could eat it. And if they didn't like it, I would eat the haggis. Um, but when it arrived, you know, Americans are, are afraid, it seems to me. They're afraid of haggis. They're afraid of all these gross things that are in haggis. Um, when it arrived, they were kind of a wee bit nervous. Um, and but they tried it, both of them tried it, and they decided that it wasn't that bad. I don't think I sent them home haggis converts, but they 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 were brave enough to try it and they seemed to enjoy it. Um, what was notable about that video for me is just how nervous I was about being on camera. So watch that video on the Scotch for Dummies channel and see if you can pick that up. Um, there was a really funny comment on it, the video actually from Dan E. Dan E said, wow, the haggis um, blew your beard off or something, it said. Well, Dan, I think the haggis actually grew me a beard probably because that was before I had said beard. Um, Hoyt Hemphill's in, fantastic Hoyt, good to see you. Scotch Four Dummies are in now. I know that Mark's in, so it's one of the other three. You should really announce who you are, but I'm going to guess it's Drew tonight. Um, Okay, wow, there's a bunch of people pouring in. We've got 90 people in already. It's going to be quite tough to keep up. I'll do my very best. It's just me, myself, tonight. Everest is saying, hi, Roy, made it in time. What are you sipping tonight? It's a fantastic and timely question, my friend. Um, my topic tonight, one of the topics is favourite 12-year-olds. Now, I have to disclose that if I have a top list or a favourite list of anything, I need 
to have the understanding that it's a completely liquid thing because that's what whiskey is. It's just constantly changing. Your palate changes, your preference changes, the whiskey profile changes over time, more expressions come, some disappear. Um, but right now I'm sipping, I've laid out my three favorite um, 12 year olds with two honorable mentions. Um, and I'll explain why they're only honor honorable mentions instead of being like a top five. But the one I'm sipping right now in this uh, nice Deanston glass, I don't want to sound like a Deanston fanboy because I'm not a Deanston fanboy, but recently in the last year, I've been really gripped by how good uh, Deanston is, is a, a Deanston 12 year old. Um, and this isn't number one. This is just one of the top three. And depending on my mood, these top three whiskies will switch around. So Deanston, and I'll explain why in a second. Bunahaven, 12 year old. Just really enjoying how this is pouring just now. Really loving it. Fantastic. And also Kilkerran, 12 year old. Um, was out recently and uh, ordered one of these in a bar, sat there sipping it, thinking it was so lovely. I was in a whiskey bar. I could have had anything I wanted when I went back to the bar. And I just ordered another one of these Kilkerran 12s. They're just so good. So I might just be opening this and sharing it with you tonight. But let me explain. The first two are produced by the same company. So Bunahaven over in Isla and Deanston in the Southern Highlands, just up uh, outside Stirling area. Burn Stewart, Distel, um, own Burn Stewart, and all of their standard, I've said this before, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself a bit, but as whiskey fans, we ask for this stuff, and when pre producers give you it, I think it should be acknowledged. But it's at 46.3%, all their core range has an age statement. They put until filtered, often in big letters across the bottle, and most of the time, most of the expressions uh, use natural color as well. So the policy there is natural color wherever at all possible, I believe. Um, but what does that mean to us? What does that mean to us when we actually enjoy the whiskey? Well, for me, it means that every single Distel Burn Stewart whiskey that I've engaged with recently, even the ones that don't carry an age statement, has been something to stop and pause with. They've all been really, really good. And I hope it's not just Ian McMillan's hand because he's not there anymore. He's moved on. He's now at Bladnock. But whatever they're doing there, they're doing it very, very well. And that's why these two, still at very, very reasonable prices, these two, the Deanston 12 and the Bunahaven 12, are both less than £40 in the UK. So I guess that's less, $50 or less in the States and I guess similar in euros elsewhere. But this for me, in so many respects, reminds me even tonight of Clean Leash as well. Clean Leash. It's got that kind of similar kind of barley sugar, sugary sweetness about it. it it's warming. It's it's got lovely vanillas, some floral notes, a great long finish. I mean, it's it's way better than any 12-year-old deserves to be. It really is. It's just, and it's where I am right now in whiskey, what I'm enjoying, this fits it perfectly. And I'll get on to the boon of having 12 in just a minute. Michael Hay is saying, hi, everyone. First time here. Welcome in, Michael. It's good to see you. I've seen all of Roy's live streams after the event, but never been here live. Fantastic. Um, I'm actually quite amazed how many people watch those very, very long live streams after the event. Um, and very, very grateful as well. The Gentleman G, I wonder if that's Gentleman Grim, or is it Gentleman GR? No, it isn't, because he's saying, hello, new here from Greece. Fantastic to welcome you in. Superb to see you. Great to have you. Willie Dolier is saying, at Aquavite, if you were to consider investing in a cask, which distillery would you go for? Well, if I had my choice of distilleries, if I could go to any distillery I wanted, or which ones that that are available do you mean because there are uh brook i think might still do it there are a few new startup distilleries that'll do it and things but honestly if i could choose any distillery i'd probably arrive at klein leash or mm, maybe lagavulin klein leash or lagavulin if you were to just make me force me into answering you just now hey uh, willie 
That's the answer. Uh, it's Scott Monroe's birthday this weekend. Apparently. Tell us the date, Scott. When is your birthday this weekend? Um, is it today, tomorrow? Uh, Tony Chihade, or I don't know how I'm pronouncing your name, Tony. I've, I've tried before, but I know you're coming to us from the Southern Hemisphere. I caught one of your comments in the chats. Uh, thank you for joining us. I can't imagine it must be very early in the morning down there, right? Uh, Tony is saying, good day, Roy. Today, in a, today is Australia Day too. Happy Australia Day. Fantastic. So plenty to celebrate. I'll raise a dram to that, Tony, and thanks for joining us. I wonder, have you got a dram in your hand at this time in the morning? Mm. Being 9am, it's a bit early for a dram. It's never too early for a dram. This Deanston would make a good breakfast dram, Tony. Kevin Bryant saying, Anok 12, £25, or Glenn Farkless 12, £28, both on offer at m &S, which would you choose? Well, m and have also got a £26 uh, Glen Scotia double cask, so despite that being an on-age statement, I may be tempted by that as well. Uh, Glen Farkless 12 is a nice, very, very typical Speyside um, uh, experience, quite light, quite light Glen Farkless, and the Anok 12, if you pick up the Anok 12, it's a very good Highlander, uh, quite a nice texture, but the thing that I get more than anything from Anok is cloves, almost like a, an aniseed type clove flavor, um, sometimes a bit of eucalyptus as well. Um, so there's a bit of kind of herbal notes going on in there. All of those are fantastic whiskies and you won't go wrong with any of them, Kevin. Travis Suders is saying, just a suggestion to help out our host, but with 93 watching, can we get a bunch of thumbs up for Roy? Travis, you're awesome. That is something I wanted to talk about when I touch on the um, uh, I've just had a super chat in from the Malted Man Cave. That can't be right, Keith. I think you've put in a digit too much. A hundred dollars. Keith and I work quite closely together. We collaborate. We do lots of kind of little things. We help each other out with bits and pieces. I wonder if that's what that's about. Um, Keith, you're a wonderful guy. It's, it's a pleasure to know you. Thank you so much. Um, Wow. Yeah, I want to touch on the, the YouTube thing in a little while. I want to mention just how you can help out creators, um, not by contributing money, um, but by just the way, the protocols and the way that you go around and use YouTube and what YouTube is looking for, how YouTube measures the quality of what we're putting together and how just very, very simple things that you can do really boosts our exposure as creators as well. Um, so when I get onto the YouTube subject a wee bit later, I hope I get there. Um, I'd like to to mention that and talk about that. Um, Keith, I don't I don't know what to say to you, my friend. Um, I am going to find some way for me to share that donation with you. Thank you so much. Um, Whiskey Untitled at Aquavite. Very interesting that twelve year scotches are marked as beginner or starters. I don't th think marketed or marked. Um, I don't think they're marketed as that. I think that there's a lot of 12 year old scotches that are good beginner whis whiskies, but I think that there are a lot of whiskies out there um, that at 12 years old that are really not. Uh, that Anok that I just mentioned there is not a beginner's whiskey. I think that you have to have had a bit of time enjoying whiskies to draw the best out of that Anok. Um, I think it would be, uh, as a beginner's whiskey, I think when beginners come into whiskey, what they're looking for is simple, bold, obvious hooks. Um, so they go for the sweet, the rich, um, they go for the smoky, the peaty, something hooks a beginner. When they're presented with something that's subtle, um, I think they can be left wondering what it's all about sometimes. And I think sometimes you need to be I don't know if, if people would agree with me in this, but it's what I've found. But I think you need to be a wee bit further on in terms of enjoying whiskey and, and really exploring whiskey on your palate before you can connect with a lot of the, the more subtle, subtle drams. Um, but yeah, nice to have you in Whiskey Untitled. Is it Charles? Is, is it you that's in, my friend? Um, and Scott Monroe's birthday is Saturday. Scott, I hope I can remember that. 
fantastic. Um, let's see. Amy is saying slanchu va. Slanchu, right back at you, Amy. Thanks for joining tonight. Yap is saying, uh, I think you corrected me on my pronunciation. Kreut, I think I've got that right. So it might be Jap. Jap. Anyway, my friend, it's nice to have you in. And um, you're saying that there's 64 in already. Um, we've got 105 in <laughs> now. I feel the pressure. I need a guest now. <laughs> um, or, or that 105, actually, it's not, that's the peak. That's what the, it's reached at the peak that I'm reading. That's the number that I see there. Um, uh, let's scroll down a bit and try and catch up. Oh, wow, just too many comments. Uh, how can you eat haggis? Everest314 is saying, Aquavida, how can you eat haggis? Those poor, poor creatures are so cute with their uneven legs. I know, but I like duck as well. And ducks are cute, as are lambs. Um, you have to accept some things when you're a, when you're a, a meat eater, I guess. Um, I've just, I've caught up with uh, Keith's super, ch Keith, you might have at least got me to ask a tricky question or asked me to drink a shot or something for that. I don't know. I'm absolutely blown away. If you have had a digit too, too many. <laughs> Let me know and I'll send it back to you, buddy. <laughs> wow. And uh, Santa Cruzen, um, this is overwhelming, guys. Uh, my friend out in the West Coast, Santa Cruzen, has just made another fantastic, huge donation. Again, no question, no comment, nothing, just to, just to contribute to the channel. Um, this is wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, I'm going to use this to um, maybe upgrade the camera or something like that. Maybe find a way to invest in the channel to bring it back to you guys. It's uh, it's just fantastic. <laughs> Vin is saying, no nonsense, Whiskey Aquavita. You need to open something. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. The only things that I have here to open are probably not worthy of, of that. Is it a disaster? I know, I know. My wife's just handed me the, uh, did, Lynn, did you bring the, did you get the knife? Yeah. yeah. Um, she's just has handed me for demonstration purposes. Uh-huh. Uh, you can make your jokes about the shape of the haggis <laughs> as you want. But yeah, what I thought I'd do with you tonight is kind of talk a wee bit about haggis and the, uh, um, I've already had my dinner, but just kind of share it with you. And uh, if I switch over here, you'll see that um, I have a haggis cam. Now, this is a this is a kind of this is a traditional kind of slightly more expensive artisan haggis. It comes in a weird shape. They're usually in more of a chub type ball shape. Um, but this is this is um, one that's made exclusively from the original traditional ingredients. So this isn't perhaps normally the haggis that I would eat, but for tonight's purposes, it was a nice small one. So I thought I would, uh, I thought I would share that with you. Um, so once my wife brings in the, the knife, um, I'm curious to see what the, <laughs> what the comments are saying now. Let's bring the comments over so I can uh, read them easily. But yes, uh, those donations that have come in, I'm gonna find a way to invest in the channel and um, and uh, bring bring it back to you guys. Bring it back to everyone. Okay, we have uh, uh, Hoyt, Hoyt Hempel saying, or Chicago. Are ah, you talking about the meetup? That would be pretty awesome. Bourbon Roy and Haggis. I don't have any bourbon. Not upstairs tonight. It's not Burns Night's. Probably not a bourbon night. Would you agree? Uh, Jason Fisk is saying big tube. <laughs> yeah. You have seen nice sausage, Roy. Essentially, that's what it is. Is it sharp? Have you checked it? No, it's blunt. Uh, 
Um, so my wife is uh, bringing me the traditional ski and do to open the haggis, but the one that she's brought is a. Uh, I'll discuss what a ski and do is as well in a little minute. Yeah, let me let me show you this in the other, in the other camera. Uh, this is a ski and do. So this is a, a, a traditional uh, knife. I mean, it is reasonably sharp, but this is a decorative knife. So this is a kind of lamb's horn thing. And you can see here how you spell ski and do. I don't know if you can make that out. Um, ski and do is, is basically the do part. You might recognize it's uh, duff or do. And uh, this is basically it's a hidden knife or black knife or a sinister knife. And a ski and do, um, it's a traditional thing, and you would have worn it with traditional Highland wear. And you'd have worn it in your sock. So if you're wearing a kilt, if you're kind of, if you're on a road somewhere and you meet somebody coming on, you, you have this thing in your sock. Um, if you're right handed in your right sock, if you're left handed in your left sock, so that if you need to be at arms quickly, you reach for your uh, ski and do. Um, I think life was pretty tough back then that you had to walk around with something ugly like this at the time. But there we go. That's uh, something that we did at once upon a time. Um, so, yes, I mean, somebody mentioned there, uh, Yap, I think, said nice sausage, Roy. Um, pretty much that's exactly what it is. And, uh, you know, that tends to be what sausages are globally right is that it, it's the it's the awful it's the it's the cuts of meat that aren't prime cuts that can't be used as a, as a cut in themselves so they're taken away they're ground up they're mixed with fats and spices and cereals and other ingredients and things and they're basically piped into what used to have been a guess to make a sausage it would have been an intestine right to make sausages and um, fortunately, we have synthetic casings now that we don't need to use the innards of an animal to, to encase these uh, offals, these mixtures, these meats. Um, but the haggis was slightly different. The haggis was uh, sheep lights or lamb lights. That is all the bits of the lamb that isn't a cut. So lungs, liver, heart, all of that kind of thing just went in. It was minced up. It was mixed with oatmeal. Um, sometimes barley or pearl barley, uh, lots of spices, lots of flavorings that would change region by region. Um, but instead of using an intestine like a typical sausage, it was it was encased in a, a sheep's stomach. We're talking years ago. You can still go to specialist places and get traditional haggis that is made in a sheep's stomach. But most of the time, as this one is just now, you've kind of got this um, synthetic uh, haggis. Uh, in casing, so there's no kind of stomachs or intestines anymore. But um, haggis was going out of fashion. This is an anecdote. Don't quote me on this, but I believe um, haggis was kind of going out of fashion in the 50s and the 60s um, into the 70s. And people in Scotland, people in the UK weren't really eating it. And then America, because it contains some, some of the lamb lights, lung and things like that, that's apparently not permitted in the States, uh, America banned it. And sales of domestic, uh, domestic sales of haggis suddenly recovered again. <laughs> the patriotic Scots, I guess, um, which I find really quite funny. But what I thought I might do, what might be an idea is just to kind of, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a mess of this, but I'll try my best, is that what you would normally do is that you would have a, a large version of this let me switch to the other camera for bits of this. You would have a larger version of this in the center of the table. Um, and now that I'm a dad, the first time I've actually started to do this is now the kids are old enough to appreciate that this happens. But you stand at the top of the table with the larger haggis and you address the haggis. And that is you take a traditional um, poem by Burns called Address to Haggis, or some people know it as Gear a Haggis. Mm. And you, you recite this poem. And what we do as a family is each of us have to kind of um, uh, recite a verse of this poem. And there's a verse in it that talks about uh, uh, wielding the knife. And as you wield the knife, uh, you, you recite this poem and you cut into the haggis and you kind of let it, you know, burst forward with all its savory goodness and things like that and basically celebrate the fact that you've got food 
um, because it really comes from a time, I mean, haggis is essentially peasant food like so many other sausages and dishes similar across the world. I mean, it's it's really the only parts and only protein that poor people could afford. Um, and that's what it's about. So what I'll do is I will read um, just the first verse. Then I'll read the verse about the where you where you actually cut into the haggis, and I'll maybe just do the last verse, um, just for kicks, just for kicks. Um, especially after the donations I've had so far, right? You have to see me doing some kind of forfeit style thing. So, um, this is called "Address to a Haggis," and it's by Rabbi Burns. Fair for your honest sonsy face. Great chieftain of the pudding race, aboon the ma ye you tack your place, pinch tripe or therm. Weel are ye worthy o' a grace, as langs my arm. His knife see rustic labour dight, and cut ye up wi' steady sight, trenching your gushing entrails bright like ony ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious sight! Warm, reek it, rich. Ye pows wa mak a mankind your care, and dish them out their bill of fare. Old Scotland wants nae skinkin wear that jops and luggies. But if ye wish her grateful prayer, gear a haggis. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take um, what we would sometimes do is make a kind of cream sauce, a peppercorn sauce, or I like to make a whiskey cream sauce. But I'll do a kind of more traditional thing, and I'll take this tiny little measure of talisker and just pour it over. You might be quite surprised how good this is. And I did mention I've already had my dinner, but just for your viewing pleasure, cheers. Come away from the mic, Roy. So it's a granular texture. It's very savoury, very spicy, very peppery. Cereal. This is more tasty than the majority of plain European sausages, I would say. And if you're off put by the ingredients that goes into a haggis, please do not ever explore what goes into a hot dog. That's all I'll say. I'm going to put this to the side and after the stream's over, that'll get microwaved and I'll have a celebratory supper. Mm. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Tomara saying anything to get more Talisker. Okay, um, got some comments coming in. Thanks, Rev, for sending these across to me. Wow, there's quite a few. <laughs> okay, uh, Travis is saying um, uh, he wanted to super chat, but this is his work computer and I won't allow my Google account to do so. Travis, uh, thank you very much just for thinking about it. Um, and that's quite amazing that you're at work and you're able to tune in to me at work. Um, you should hang on a little bit because there, on the printer just behind me, there's um, a comment of yours from earlier that I would like to, to read out as well. Uh, Maltman, Mike and friends. Hey, Mike, nice to see you in, my friend. Um, Managed to celebrate Burns during my lunch hour at the House of Malt today. Superb, that's in Carlisle. It's a specialist uh, whiskey shop in Carlisle that, that Mike works at. Uh, microwaved, <laughs> microwaved haggis really pissed the boss man off as it stunk the entire stockroom. I can imagine it would. But it does microwave quite well. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, uh, whiskey Entitled is saying, Guess we're doing haggis when we go to Scotland. Only if you want to, if you're curious, if you're curious, and if you meet me 
um, and we have the opportunity, I would encourage you to, because I just like to dispel that kind of fear, that nonsense that exists around it. Um, uh, Tom R is saying, uh, can you tell me the story about the Longmorn 16 bottle you posted on Instagram? It's actually sitting behind me, Tom, um, because I bought this uh, at auction and uh, I opened it here just out of its box. It's not made it into the cabinet yet. But yeah, the story about the Longmorn 16 bottle is that uh, 2014, um, the Whiskey Rev had been talking about how he wanted to get his hands on a Longmorn. He'd heard it was good, and I hadn't tried a Longmorn at that time. Um, you, the only Longmorn I knew existed were, were, I guess, independent bottlings and things. And at the airport, I discovered this, which is the 16-year-old, which replaced a legendary Longmorn called Longmorn 15, uh, official bottlings from Longmorn. Um, I bought a bottle of this, the Whiskey Rev and I opened it, and immediately we went out and bought another two bottles of it. We were just absolutely blown away by how lovely it was. Um, and if you talk about the whiskies that as you get into whiskey, you get into whiskey and you taste more and more, there's just so much more in this. And the presentation was wonderful as well, 48%, um, non-chill filtered, a, a nice age on it as well. And it wasn't expensive at the time. I think I picked my first bottle up for 40 odd pounds. So wonderful value. But as is often the case with these expressions, um, stock dried up and they stopped the Longhorn 16 for a year or two years or more. And for the same price, they replaced it with a non-age statement, 40% ABV um, version called Distiller's Choice. And uh, I think it was Distiller's Choice. Yes, Distiller's Choice. And it was not a patch on this, not a patch. There is a new 16 year old out that's very good, but it's different from this, it's different. And this is an amazing, an amazing whiskey. Um, I paid 98 pounds at auction for this, which is double what you would be paying retail when it was originally available. But if I was to buy the current 16 year old, it would be about 89, 90 pounds. So not much more than the current Longmorton 16. I think that's, I hope that's what you were asking, Tom. It's a wonderful whiskey. The guys at the Whiskey Vault, uh, Daniel and Rex from the Whiskey Vault, um, fantastic whiskey channel, just superb stuff those guys are doing. Great fun as well. Um, Daniel's fetish is Longmorn 16, and I can understand absolutely why. Um, so we're kindred spirits in that respect. Raster is saying, buy a bottle and give us a review of this donated bottle. Uh, are you talking about from the Super Chat donations? That's a good idea, Raster, if that's what you're saying. That's a good idea. Haggis cam is a thing. <laughs> yes, am I off the haggis cam? Yes, I am, good. Um, haggis cam is a thing. <laughs> the last time I used that camera, it was the Dram Cam, wasn't it? It was Market Whiskey Whistle. Uh, named it the Dram Cam. George Kaplan is saying, is that Tabasco chocolate I saw there? Yes, absolutely. Uh, George, that's a good spot. This is Tabasco chocolate. Finished a tin already. Um, eh, oh, I might have a wee piece left, actually. Um, but I've got a, a sealed tin here as well. This was given to me by my friend Robert in the States, the Whiskey Scout. He sent it across to me. Um, I've since discovered that you can buy this here now, but it's very, very expensive. It's about £7 a tin. Yes, I've still got a piece left in here. So, um, yeah, Tabasco chocolate is quite fantastic and it goes very well with whiskey, as most dark chocolate does. Um, Tony Evans is saying the camera is fine. <laughs> Buy whiskey. <laughs> okay, the camera's fine. Buy whiskey. Superb, Tony. It's a good idea. Everwind is saying, uh, do you have a kilt? Yes, I have a kilt, Everwind, and I have a kilt in my family, Tartan. Um, my name is, my surname is Duff, so I like the ski and do. Uh, Duff, D do is the same, it's Gaelic for black. Um, so my surname is Roy Black, I guess, in Gaelic. Um, so I have, the McDuff Tartan um, is is really quite gaudy. It's a kind of orange and yellow affair, but they do a modern version um, that's less muted. I mean, kilts would originally have been quite muted and things, because I guess you would have to go perhaps hunting in them and things. Um, but the modern one is really quite bright and vibrant, and uh, that's the one I have. I have the modern version of that, and that's what I get married in. Perhaps I'll share a photo one day. Hoagie Bear is saying, Aquavite, will you be attending the Whiskey Show in Glasgow on February 24th and 25th? 
I'm currently negotiating with the wife. I'm desperate to go because um, it's it's a it's going to be a great show. It's the old and rare show. Uh, Angus McRail will be there. I think he's hosting one of the master classes, and it's worth it for him alone. Um, uh, he's saying, "Look out for." This keeps jumping. I'm sorry. He says, "Look out for." Uh, finest whiskey a rarity shop from berlin which is one of the exhibitors i will i'll look out for that hoagie but i'd love to go to that show um it's a damn expensive show to go to but i have the feeling that it's really really worth it so yeah i have my eye on that and uh, hopefully by tomorrow i'll know whether i'm going or not uh tom r oh my god aquavite please tell me you have a kilt and you have pictures <laughs> uh yes yes i'll, I'll need to I'll need to share that with you then. How would I do that? Maybe on Instagram or something? Um, maybe I'll have it here. One night, I'll share it with you one of these nights. Yap is saying, turn on that haggis, Camroy. We want to see you cut that sausage. Hopefully you got that, Yap. Reb Mordecai, nice to have you in, Reb. Good to have you in, my friend. There is a similar recipe in Jewish cookery called kishke, or kishke, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Stuffed an intestine pipe delicious. It is cooked inside a Shabbat stew called cholent or colent. Barley meat slow cooked stew. Fantastic. And I guess that's a probably similar concept where it's quite peasant food that would have traditionally been eaten by poorer, poorer people, I guess. Alan Ward, happy Burns Day, sir. Glad I made it to a live one. Fantastic to have you in, Alan. I'm, I'm glad you made it too. Frank Lampard, on the recommendation of Ralphie, I picked up a bottle of banknote blended whiskey for $17. Not great, but very good for the money. Uh, I haven't tried that banknote, but I hear that, uh, again, for a very, very cheap whiskey, the quality is pretty good and uh, it's fairly decent. I don't know how motivated, motivated I am to have a bottle of it, Frank. Are you enjoying it? About 50. Well done, Roy. Oh, about 50. Well done, Roy. Comments. Good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Everest is saying, Aquavite, my wee haggis, cuddly toy, squeaked in shock when he saw you cutting. He squeaks when you squeeze him. His name is Rory Closer. Huh? Well, that's the, the kind of thing that they say about haggis. And one of the museums here in Glasgow, there's, a, there's actually an exhibit where they've got a stuffed haggis and it's it's made up to look like a little creature, maybe just a little bit bigger than a guinea pig, I would say. Um, and the idea is, is that the males have uh, left legs that are shorter than the right legs so that they can run around a mountain without toppling down. And the females um, have right legs that are shorter than the left so that they run in the opposite direction around the mountains. And the idea is, is that they bump into each other and meet and all these crazy kind of stories like that. But it's quite amazing just how, thank you, it's quite amazing just how many people um, come to this country and think that ha haggis, and the plural for haggis, haggai, they're told, <laughs> is a real animal. And, and obviously, it's just absolute nonsense. It's, uh, it's just a really fun thing. Unfortunately, it's lamb lights. And um, the one I had tonight, the one I cut open tonight, was made from lamb. Um, but the more modern ones that you would tend to buy uh, are, are mostly pork and beef fat. Um, so they're they're uh, they're not always lamb nowadays. Although they may still have some lamb in them. Uh, Tom and uh, a few other guys asked. I just need to make sure switch to the camera so I can see what I'm holding up here. This is uh, um, one of these is me, and the other one is my brother. Um, this is uh, a few years ago, as you can probably tell. There's a bit less silver in my my hair, um, but this is um, yeah, the day or the morning or the day that I was married um, and that's the that's the Macduff Tartan, uh, the modern Macduff Tartan, so there you go um, my wife uh, grabbed this and brought it in for you, that's kind of cool that she had that at hand so there you have it um, and we had a Highland Wear wedding so we were kind of, everybody had the option to wear Highland Wear so even um, people coming from the States and people coming from England and all over they all came and rented Highland wear and um, everybody at the wedding was was dressed in kilts, people that had never worn a kilt before and it was just an, an absolute blast, it was just great, great fun. Um, I think it's uh, 
still very, very common to get married in traditional Highland wear in Scotland. Uh, Whiskey Sid. Whiskey Sid. We've been in touch, Sid, haven't we? You're in the south of England and you're talking about coming up. Um, fantastic to have you in, Sid. It's the first time I've read your comments. I have had haggis once and loved it. Good for you. In Scotland in two weeks and plan to have it at least once more. Yes, we have spoken. Um, if I'm here in a couple of weeks, Sid, just stay in touch with me and let me know when you're up, okay? The Whiskey Scout, this Deanston 30. Ah, I saw that. I saw that. So the, the Whiskey Scout, Robert, is the guy who sent me this. And he, I also saw an image from the Whiskey Scout where he picked up a 30-year-old Deanston. It's the oldest drum I ever had, and it is a long, lingering finish. Hope you're given that time. Hope you're given that time to open up. I'm sure you are, Robert. I know you're a canny guy. Everest to St. Aquaviti, I see Gordon and McPhail has a sort of standard bottling of Longmorn 14-year-old for less than the Noyage Statement original. Would you buy the Noyage Statement? No. The Noyage Statement Longmorn is sickly sweet and not to my palate at all. It's not to the Rev's palate. It's not to our friend's palate. And I was really gutted about that because I bought him a bottle of this for his birthday. Um, it, it was a letdown for us. And I don't like being negative about whiskey. I really hate being negative about whiskey because I feel that almost all whiskey has its right context and things. But there are some cynical whiskies out there and I felt that that was a cynical bottling. Gordon McPhail's Longmorn is a licensed bottling by them. So it's not exactly like a single cask independent bottling. It's a kind of licensed thing. They send their casks to be filled at Longmorn and they mature them sometimes at the distillery, more often than not in Gordon McPhail's warehousing. And then they're allowed to bottle it under license with the Longmorn name. Uh, they do the same for Macallan. They call it Spaymalt. They do the same for Mortlach. They do the same for various other uh, distilleries they have the same arrangement with. I would go for the Gordon McPhail, but don't go on my say. If at all possible, please try and test it first. Try and sample it first, Everest. But that's where I would go anyway. The Malted Man Cave is saying that money is for a bottle. Thank you, big guy. That money will be spent on a bottle. If that's what it's for, that's where it's going. Thank you. Dave Beasley, I don't know if anyone else has tried it. My latest open bottle is a Sherry Stronachy 10-year-old. No, I haven't. Um, I haven't tried it. How are you enjoying it? Um, Dave, let us know. Um, Dave, I think you're a new guy in as well. Nice to welcome you. Adam Brudner, Aquaviti pronounced Kishku and Cholent. Thank you, Rep. Oh, oh, that's from that's from Adam. Wow. So that was the that was the dish that the Reb Mordecai was telling us about. And Adam's come in and helped me with the pronunciation. Thank you. The Whiskey Scout recite Tamashanta for us. Um, oh wow, I've just had uh, another fabulous, generous, amazing super chat in from Ethan. Ethan, I'm going to guess that your surname is Taut. I hope after that donation that you've given me, Ethan, that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it says, cheers from snowy South Dakota, Roy. <laughs> Absolutely love your channel. Let's see that kilt. Uh, for that, I'll show you again, Ethan. There you go. Thank you, my friend. Absolutely wonderful. You know, the, these super chat things, just for the record, this is wonderful and I really appreciate it. And I appreciate that I haven't really given you any other outlet to support the channel because I haven't sorted out my Patreon yet and I will sort it out in the next couple of weeks. I'll make a promise that before the next live I do, I'll have something progressed on Patreon. But I want to do a welcome video, a thank, thank you video, and I want to have the rewards in place. I want to have some value for people who support the channel at the get-go. Um, but the idea for a super chat um, and the way it should work um, it works fantastically well as, as tonight, as you can see, but it's like, it's just smaller contributions just to make sure that you get your voices heard and your comments across and questions answered and things. But I am absolutely blown away by your generosity tonight. It's wonderful. It, it's just amazing. Um, and it really does help me and encourage me and give me very, very positive feedback to keep uh, creating content to keep the channel going. And I think that everybody is getting something out of these live feeds as well, not least me. Um, 
but everybody's enjoying them and um, and I want to just keep refining it and, and keeping the content as good as it can be. Um, Whiskey Throttle. Whiskey Throttle coming in late and saying hi. Hello, Whiskey Throttle. It's nice to have you in. Um, thanks for joining. And Hoagie Bear, if you lift his kilt and see a quarter pounder and a pair of nuggets, he's a McDonald. <laughs> thanks for that, Hoagie Bear. The joke's from Germany. Okay, good. Um, I seem to have caught up a wee bit. Um, I think I've caught up to where... Um... Ah, Tom Harris saying, Aquaviti, any chance of getting the Rev as a guest one day? Um, I don't know, Rev. What do you think? What do you think? Um, would you be up for joining me for a live? Would you come on here? Would you tell us all about your new job? Would you tell us... Would you join us? I quite like the idea that the Rev is in the background, um, this kind of sinister, all-knowing character. I quite like that idea. But no, I think it's just a matter of time before the Rev comes on. Absolutely. When he's not too busy, he's just started a new job working for McAllen, and uh, they're making him uh, set out very early in the morning and things like that. But I still think that could be a possibility, Tom. Um, John Pallister has just sent a, a donation. John, you're obviously in the UK because I have just had uh, a notification to say that you're sending me £10. Thank you very much, John. You're a wonderful soul and um, that's very much appreciated. And I think that's a new name to me as well, John. Have you been subbing to the channel? Have you? Have we connected in any way before? And if we have, I apologise for, for not recognising your name. I'm usually quite good at recognising it. Nano Green, Nano Green Cleaners are in. That's my brother. So Nano Green Cleaning is this guy on your left-hand side. He's kind of changed a little bit, if we're honest, over the years as well. <laughs> and another donation coming in. It must be the eating the haggis people are... If, if, if he's got to eat that, he needs money from the wonderful, kind, patient, calm gentleman that is Rob from Whiskey in the Six. Fantastic channel, fantastic whiskey scholar, um, prolific content coming out of the guy. He just absolutely loves it. And Rob is saying, happy Burns Day, friends. Beautiful show tonight, Roy. Thank you very much. I don't even feel like I've started the show yet. I feel like I've just been kind of sitting here... Um, fielding this stuff. And George as well. Uh, a huge donation from George Kaplan, who's also a wonderful guy, um, Amy's husband. Um, thank you, Roy, for helping us celebrate Burns Night. Love you, brother. I love you too, George. You're some kind of superstar. This is just amazing. This is overwhelming. I'm going to have to go and have a lie down. You're, the show's going to finish early tonight. I'm only kidding, it's going to keep going Apu is saying, you're going to earn a nice bottle tonight Roy Absolutely, absolutely I have already Apu, I have already Ethan is saying, uh, Roy have you tried Oban 18? I just opened a bottle of it and I'm really enjoying it No, but Oban 14 is one of my favourites It's one of my favourite staples um, I know it's only 43% um, uh, I really enjoy the Open 14. I think it's a very well-crafted dram. Um, from memory, Ethan, I haven't tried the 18, but uh, I would like to. Um, and Amy, oh my God. Amy, who I think is um, George's wife, has also made an absolutely huge donation. This is staggering. This is absolutely unbelievable. Slanchava, she's saying, um, thank you for the entertainment and sharing your whiskey wisdom with all of us. Don't even feel like I've spoken about much whiskey wisdom tonight, Amy. That's just wonderful. This is just an amazing community. An amazing community. And I will find a way to share this awesome generosity with all of you. I'll make sure this comes back at you. Um, the Altered Man Cave is saying you might be able to quit your day job. Well, exactly. It's um, Who knows? I love my day job. I've got a fantastic job. Um, this is my hobby. But if my hobby can generate and recover money like this and it becomes a self-financing hobby, that is some kind of awesome. 
And Whiskey Sid, my friend from the South, is saying, get yourself four JW Red Label miniatures and relive that train trip to Glasgow. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, thank you, Sid. You're a superstar and you remember the story from the stream live, uh, the Ralphie stream last week. Um, tell me, Sid, are you coming up on the train or are you flying up? Now, let me, let me just, when I talk about the Ralphie thing, let me just grab something quickly. What I wanted to do is, um, by the way, there is a quiz tonight, but it is optional, like it always is. And if you want the quiz, uh, just make sure that the Whiskey Rev or Vin at No Nonsense Whiskey, if you just uh, highlight either of those guys and tell them, yeah, we want the quiz, or say, nah, not the quiz tonight, just keep talking. Um, but what I was really moved by some of the comments that came out in the live stream that we went that we did on Sunday night. It was a very successful live stream. It was... Um, it, it was a uh, great fun to do uh, with the guests I had on, and it was a privilege um, to be in a position to kind of celebrate Ralphie and what he's brought to the community over the years. Um, because regardless of whether we're Ralphie fans or we're not, or we're just kind of passive Ralphie viewers, um, I think that that what he's done and what he's brought to whiskey cannot be underestimated or sorry cannot be uh, overstated sometimes not just whiskey but also scotland as well he's a fantastic ambassador and um, but i went i was going through the comments and i was looking out for the competition um entrance and things and i was reading the comments and uh, i want to just read out a few of them um and share them with you because i really think that the feedback we got was quite amazing and the first one is from travis travis suders and he's written, when I first got into whiskey, I only knew of one channel that had done any reviews. Not many people in my area are whiskey drinkers, and it was such a huge blessing to find Ralphie's channel. To find some guidance on tasting, enjoying, and appreciating was amazing. It was also a great buyer's guide for me at first as well. Now with the addition of me finding the whiskey fabric, I feel connected to a huge community of enthusiasts. Superb, he writes. Um, it is superb, Travis, you're absolutely right. And um, this community that we've got is just strengthening and growing. And as more people are coming on and as, as more content is being created and the quality is getting better, we're becoming more connected. We're not in competition with each other. We're realizing that there's an appetite for this and it's building and building. I've just had another donation in from Dave, Dave Beasley. You're a superstar, Dave. You're obviously in the UK. Thank you so much for that. Um, I've had a comment in from Dave as well saying, really enjoy your streams, Roy. I'm very grateful. I'm, I'm thankful and thankful for that, Dave. Um, it's wonderful that you do. He's saying, I had been on here before. I changed my user from Retrocom. Ah, I recognize you now. I recognize you now to my own name. Got to sign off now as getting ready for work. Keep up the great work and good night to all. Dave, I'll finish off my Deanston and raise a glass to you. Thank you very much, my friend. Slanchava. Mm. Don't work too hard, Dave. Thank you. Um, a Soltar is asking Mark at the Scotch Four Dummies if there's a stream tonight. Mark, I forgot to ask, but you guys, you guys, normally do your video on the Monday, and I know it was Timorous Beastie and recognition of of Robbie Burns, which I thought was fantastic, and I'd loved that your rendition. Um, of uh, you did Timorous Beastie, um, and I and I was absolutely creasing myself at the translation that came up where where um, Timorous Beastie it says um, oh we curn Timorous Beastie oh what a heartbeat in thy breastie it was translated as well dressed creature or something like that which I just thought was just too funny um, but you did a, a really great attempt at it Mark and if you're doing your Timorous Beastie live tonight uh, let us know and. Um, Hopefully, at some point, I'll be able to hand over a lot of these guys after a, a brief rest um, to the Scotch for Dummies live stream later on tonight. Um, it's constant. Um, Jay Fretless has just sent in another donation for five, $5. Thank you very much. And, he, and Jay Fretless is saying, my haggis isn't as big as the other super chatters, but I hope it helps. Keep up the good work, Roy. Um, it's absolutely fabulous, wonderful, Jay Fretless. I don't, I don't know what to say. It's just fantastic. This bottle of whiskey that I'm going to buy with these donations is getting better and better all the time. And whatever I do with it, I'll share it with you, I promise. 
Wow. Uh, your real accent, Travis is saying your real accent almost came out, use guys. <laughs> yes, use guys. That would normally be my real accent. Uh, another comment on the Ralphie stream is from Scotland Yard, who I think is, is also called Eve. If I want to get away from things, I put on a marathon of Ralphie videos, not knowing he helped me through tough times. Thank you, Ralphie. That's quite cool, Eve. Thank you very much. Tony Evans said, when you got the drams out to drink, I thought you had been in my cupboard. So this was me when I pulled out all of Ralphie's um, whiskies of the year for the last five or so years. That's what I was pulling out to, to drink on the stream last week. Um, and he, and uh, Tony says, I thought I'd been in his cupboard. He thought I'd been in his cupboard. What more can I say about the influence of Ralphie on us all? I think I've watched almost all of his vlogs and now enjoy yours as much. Thank you very much, Tony. This along with your introduction to me of the other contrib contributors of the round table, I might have to cancel my Netflix to find time to keep up with you all. Thank you. I know exactly what you mean, Tony, and there's so much content being produced now um, that, that you realize you're watching more minutes on YouTube than you perhaps are on your Sky subscription, your Netflix, your Amazon, whatever it may be. It's uh, I Certainly, I found that anyway. And Tom R. Uh, mentioned... Um, Uh, for me, Ralphie had made whiskey more approachable for me. I was getting overwhelmed when I was in my local store, but Ralphie made picking a good whiskey seem reasonable and saved me lots of money. So I bought stuff that was fitting my palate at the time. And you make a good point, Tom, and you've made that point before, that what these these um, what these creators are doing is that they're enthusing about the whiskies that connect and they can engage with so that it's it's helping you avoid especially if you can find a reviewer that your palate is quite aligned with. For me, my palate seems to be very aligned with Phil Dwyer at Whiskey Wednesday. If Phil raves about a whiskey, I know I'm in safe territory, not to even bother trying it first. If he's raving about something, I'll just go out and buy it. I did it this year with the Moin Oloroso when he gave the Moin Oloroso from Buna Havan a 10 out of 10. It was an expensive whiskey. It was about 80 or 90 pounds, I think. I just went out and I dropped the money on it and I was not disappointed one bit. It was one of the event whiskies of last year for me. So I get exactly where you're coming from, Tom, and Ralphie did do a great job for me as well in that respect. And finally, Willie Dolier on the Ralphie stream says, eh, Ralphie, as honest and wise as your granddad. Perfect, Willie, you're absolutely right. I've just had yet another donation in from Michael Hay. Um, he's donated £10 and he's also said you're a fantastic ambassador for Scotland yourself, Roy, from a fellow Scot. Thank you very much, my friend Michael, to come from a Scot. That's really cool to hear. And for whiskey, keep up the amazing work. Hope to share a dram with you one day. Michael, you'd be very welcome. Anytime you're nearby Glasgow, reach out to me and let me know where you are. That would be fantastic. Travis is saying, Aquavite, is there one American whiskey bourbon that you have wanted to try that you can't get a hold of? Um, yeah, there's a few. Um, we It's getting, sometimes you just see them in the shop and you kind of need to jump on them because there's not going to be a steady supply, it would seem. Um, but there's a few ryes. I passed on a Pikesville rye. I should have picked it up. Um, the one that I can't get hold of, but I have tried, uh, Triple Cap Walt brought me a sample of the Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel strength, um, or barrel proof, I'm not sure how they state it, barrel strength maybe, um, that was fantastic. It really redefined really what bourbon can taste like for me. And then um, I also had somebody else who was kind enough to give me a bottle of Elijah Craig barrel proof, and I've got that downstairs, and it's become such a special occasion bottle. It's a real event whiskey for me. Wonderful stuff. So yeah, I'd love to kind of get into bourbon more. I'm a bit of a noob. I don't know that much about bourbon. I certainly don't understand the landscape that very well. I'm just kind of learning it expression by expression, one at a time. Um, but it's becoming so difficult because bourbon in its domestic home country is so expensive that by the time it gets to here, it's just prohibitive. And the whiskey, when it gets to that price point, the whiskey can't really live up um, to the to, to the cost anymore, to the investment that's required to join that club in most cases. Um, but I know that there are still some good value whiskies, um, some good good value American whiskies out there. And it's just a case of keeping an eye out for them. 
not even sure if I answered that question there, my friend. Sorry. Uh, Kevin Bryant is saying, totally agree with you on Phil. I have also made many blind purchases on his recommendation and I've never been disappointed. Moino Oloroso and Laga 12. Laga Villain 12, absolutely. I already had the Laga Villain 12, but Phil, uh, Phil and, and I are involved in a, a, a chat discussion. He comes on saying the Laga Villain 12 this year, 2017, is fantastic. I had it in the cupboard. I was saving it for Christmas. Um, I couldn't hold my water. I lasted a few days and ended up opening it up. And he was, of course, he was absolutely right. I think it's the best expression that's come out of Lagavulin in recent years. I think it's really, really fabulous. In fact, even though it's a cast strength, limited release, a special edition from Diageo, um, I couldn't see past it for my Whiskey of the Year yet last year. Um, fantastic stuff. Let's see what the Rev is sending through. Um, Uh, Whiskey Throttle is saying, ask Rob if he's going to send you some of those fancy samples he got. Well, that's Rob Whiskey in the Six. Um, Rob and I have already done a bit of a, a sample exchange. In fact, Rob, if you're out there sitting here waiting for us to crack open and share, is this wonderful little bottle of Canadian Club 40-year-old, 45%, waiting patiently for us to get together and share it. Now, we missed an opportunity because I know that we've collabed and we've done a, a live stream together. Um, but we were we were focusing on other things that night. But I think the next time that we get together, I'm going to save this um, for you, big guy. Uh, Drew said they are having a live stream tonight. So yes, Scotch for Dummies uh, usually goes out at about 2 a.m. my time. So I don't know what is. I think that's 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, Scotch for Dummies. Hop on over to their channel. By the way, I'm just going to mention in the box underneath the the video stream tonight you'll see a list of all my fellow collaborators and whiskey tubers there you can see links direct to all of their channels so if i mention any of those channels tonight and you don't know how to find them uh, you don't know how to spell the name or something they're all linked underneath all of them um uh danny i mentioned you earlier danny i hope you caught me mentioning you um ralphie has cost me a lot of money I hope he saved you a lot as well. And tell me, it might be a lot of money, but I bet you've enjoyed almost every single drop of it, right? Uh, a few people are asking how much YouTube take of the Super Chat donations. Uh, I've still to get a paycheck from uh, from YouTube, um, so I'm not sure how much it is. It is a few percent. Um, it's just the nature of it. I mean, when you consider the platform that they're giving us in order to connect us like this, I don't grudge it. I, I really don't. Um, I know that it's money coming from you and they take it. It comes to me less than what you donated, but it's just the nature of it. And what's the alternative? You would do a PayPal where PayPal takes some money or we, we wait until we, I, I don't know. It's just, I think it's still a, a good function and it's not prohibitive, let's say, from what I can tell so far. But what I'm going to do now that I've monetized the channel, I'm actually going to share with you down to the cent what YouTube pays me. So what I've earned um, in ads, um, what I earn in terms of, of Super Chat. Um, and I'll also hold myself, I'll let you know exactly what that money is being, whether I'm just buying whiskey with it or whether I'm investing it back into the channel in some way. Um, whiskey Throttle saying, Aquavite, two days in a row, my life has been taken. My life has been taken over my life. Ah, okay, sorry, Phil, I don't understand that one. I'd, your life. Uh, the live streams have taken over your life. We've ended up in a couple of live streams together, just out the blue, Instagram live streams and things like that, haven't we? We just kind of bump into each other in these places. It's, it's good fun. <laughs> Superb. Okay, now, as I talk about the YouTube thing and how much money and things I'm earning, um, I'm already, how can it be over an hour? Okay. I'm going to spend three minutes talking about the YouTube thing. Um, and Whiskey Rev, can you tell me whether there's been an appetite for a quiz tonight or not? Because that'll tell me how much time I've got to talk about this subject. I want to talk about the community. I want to talk about you as contributors. I want to talk about um, uh, the YouTube policy changes and things like that as I sip on my Buna Haven. Ooh. There is no way you could taste this Buna Haven 12 year old blind and think that it was as young as 12 years old. The flavors in it are so 
rich. It's a lick of smoke, just a lick of smoke. But they're so rich, so dark fruit, so sherry driven. But there's they've got that flavour, that kind of dank um, flavour that's suggestive of kind of dunnage environment and things like that. For a forty pounds whiskey presented like this whiskey is presented, nobody can deny me this being one of my favourite twelve years old. I mean, twelve year olds. It's just it's just a fantastic experience for the money. Hmm. And the 18 is even better. So, Rev, if you feed back to me and let me know whether anybody's even interested in doing the quiz tonight or they just kind of want to just let the chat go on. Anyway, um, what's happening with YouTube is that if you compare YouTube to traditional media, traditional media sell advertising the same as YouTube, but traditional media, TV, publications, magazines, newspapers, whatever, they can specify exactly where ads go how they're consumed, how the advertisements are presented. YouTube finds that tricky. YouTube is uh, driven by people, it's driven by independent creators, it's driven by people in their homes. Um, it's a completely different dynamic. And the ads that they put out, you have to sign up to a partner program with them and say, yeah, I'm going to behave myself, I'm going to do the right things, and I'm going to follow the guidelines. Please show ads next to my content and we can both earn money out of that. And that's what the partner program basically means. Fantastic. Traditional media is attacking by saying every time they find politically charged content, ripped off content, anything inappropriate, traditional media jump on that and give you use it as a way um, to show advertisers why they should not be spending their money in the YouTube environment because ads can be displayed next to politically charged content and things that is not appropriate. So YouTube has to be seen to take action because otherwise the whole thing could fall down and YouTube just, Google doesn't get the advertisers through. So one of the steps that they've taken, it used to be that they'd made a, a, a fairly heavy change last year that everyone had to get to 10,000 views on their channel before they could monetize. And that was fair enough because that's a level investment on the creator's side to show that they're seriously committed to a channel and putting a project together that people will enjoy. Fine. But recently they've changed it again and they're saying that you have to have a thousand subscribers and you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time. Now that's really difficult to get to. Um, even in whiskey, if we just look at the kind of whiskey tube community, it's already very, very heavy. There's, I'm currently following about 70 or 80 English speaking whiskey content channels. It's huge. Um, it's a quite crowded space. So to get that level of subscribers is super tricky. It's very difficult. And there are channels out there bringing good, good content that can't even break out of double figures right now. Um, so uh, we all kind of need to watch out for those channels, look at the channels that's bringing the content, look at the guys that are bringing good stuff and help them along. Um, but it remains difficult for them. So they're, they've got a long trek ahead of them to get to a point where they can monetize. But even when they monetize, even when they get 1,000 subscribers, they get 4,000 hours of viewing time and they monetize the channel, what they're actually getting as a reward is pennies. I did a thing in October and I ran it for about four or five weeks and I earned nine pounds, about $14, um, for about thirteen or 14,000 views. Um, so um, while that's not bad, I mean, over the course of a year, I could go out and buy myself a really bo decent bottle of whiskey for that. And all you guys at home need to do is sit and watch a skippable ad for five or six seconds. Um, or you can watch the ad and, and the channel gets paid more, but only watch the ad if it intrigues you, if there's some value in it for you, of course. Um, if you click on the ad, it's a big deal. Anyway, that's kind of how uh, that's working. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, the fantastic community that we've got, what we're trying to bring to you, the, the fact that the whiskey tubers, these content creators are starting to get together, they're starting to support each other, they're starting to realize that we are in no way in competition, that we're helping each other um, bring better content to you. I was hoping that I could reach out to you because I know that you're doing this anyway. Um, but just to talk about how you can help us, and I'm not talking about by donations. Um, of course, there's things like Patreon that's a wonderful ad, um platform for supporting creators. But what I'm talking about is, is if you view a video, please leave a mark. 
like the video. It costs nothing. You just need to be signed in, obviously, in a YouTube account. Like the video. Please make sure that you're subscribed. And if you enjoy the content of the channel, hit that bell so that you get notifications when the channels put out new content. And I really don't put out much content at all. I put out maybe one feature video a month and a couple of lives a month. So you're not going to get bombarded with notifications. Um, but I would say that, that more than just hitting that, that thumbs up, if that content is connected with you in any way, if you if you laughed out loud a bit, or if you learned something new, please leave a comment. Let the creator know that what they're doing is worthwhile. Let them feel that the content's being watched. It goes a hell of a long way, and YouTube love it. YouTube can see that that creator is then bringing quality content. Uh, they suffer less from getting uh, money, uh, videos marked as not appropriate for advertisers. Uh, they get their content promoted within the YouTube environment so that people can find it easier and all that helps them grow and it helps them move forward. You can actually help the creator. Um, that's kind of all I want to say about it just now. I think it's it's worthwhile pointing out. Um, I know it's easy. I do it myself. I watch a video and I skip off before I've even thought to pause for a second and hit that like button and leave a comment. Especially on live streams when you're kind of watching on a live stream and you're using the live chat. Once it closes down, you just close it down and go away. The the the, the permanent chat underneath the video is always open and the, and the thumbs up is always there as well. So you can do that and just kind of give feedback. Constructive feedback is also good. So if there's something that you normally enjoy but it didn't quite ring true on that viewing or there's something that you want to say to a channel that you feel might help them along or help them refine their content even if you feel it's a wee bit negative the worst thing you can do is thumbs down and not leave any feedback leave feedback just tell them i had a fantastic discussion with a guy i hope you don't mind but a chap called eric dollar who came on to the ralphie thing on sunday night and he said i like your style roy but there is no way i'm going to invest two hours of my time watching one of these videos, please start to make shorter content. Now I was able to enter into an exchange, a discussion with Eric um, about why the live stream is a different dynamic from a shorter video, what's involved in investment on my part in that. And I went back and he came back and replied to me. I replied to him again. I then find out he's coming to Scotland later in the year. We might even find that we hook up when he comes to Scotland. All of that from what we could have been potentially perceived as a negative comment just fantastic. That's exactly what you need. I'm not going to delete these negative, as long as these comments are not kind of personal or abusive uh, to me or anybody that's involved in the chat or the community. I'm not going to delete these comments and um, they're going to stay there. The, the ones that are kind of meant to help me, the constructive criticism as well. So please do that. Um, okay. That's all I want to talk about. If you've got any questions about the YouTube thing, we're all very happy and open about it. We're happy to talk about it. We're happy to interact with you and let you know what we're doing. We're building a community here, and that's what it's all about. We're all getting such a buzz out of it. We're really, really loving it. Um, so, Rev, tell me, what about uh, quite a few coming in? Some want chat and others like the quiz idea. Okay. Well, in order for the quiz to work, we need two people to step up and say, I want to do the quiz. So if I get two people who are shouting from the rafters to say that they want to do the quiz, we'll do the quiz. If not, we'll just let the live stream finish. It's already five past 11. I've been going for an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes. So it's a good time. It's up to you guys. If there's two people that want to do the quiz and everybody else is quite happy and they've had a nice time, they can just kind of hang off and leave. But before I do that, what I want to do, drop the knife on the floor, is I want to draw the uh, competition for this guy. During the Ralphie review, this is Ralphie's Whiskey of the Year 2017, Glen Cadam, 15 year old. Fantastic presentation, 46%, age statement in place, and it says on the bottle and the carton, unchill filtered and natural color. No added coloring. Um, so all you had to do was leave a comment. It's closed now. I've got everybody's comments here. I'm going to attempt something that might or might not work. I'm going to try to do a 
screen share. And what I'll do, sorry, apologies. I'll share the screen so that you can see all the entrants. So as I share this screen, I'm just going to roll down. Um, should I name these? There's 55. Mr. Nista, Whiskey Wings, Tom R. Robert J Johnson, the malt cask, that's Mike, Chris Beaton, Ch Tony Chehead, I apologize, Tony Barhauser, the Whiskey Tuber, Kevin Bryant, Whiskey Sid, Whiskey Biker, Frank Lampard, Whiskey Wolf, formerly known as Ebed, Everwind, Dan E., Hoya Hemphill, Louis Achoa, The Real Clay, F4AU, Philip Lloyd, Martin Colmer, Russell Creel, Whiskey Den UK, Bob Scullion, Oliver Trewavis, George Kaplan, Gillian B, Jason Viswani, Daniel Brown, Travis Suders, Brandon Lee, Yap Croyt, Jez Batty, Nick Place, Dago Cleo, Ryan McLeave, Andy Walker, Tony Evans, Van Johnny Evers, Everest 314, Ryan Tackett, Chris Mills, Whiskey Jason, James Hope, Scotland Yard, Eve, Alan Wilson, Tomato Yoshi, Son Galloway, Matthew Harris, Brent Murphy, Tengis, Narciss, Apodegist, and Willie Dolia. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll see if I can, I'll leave the screen share up. I'll ask Siri, no, I'm going to switch to the camera and then I'll switch back to the screen share. See if this is working. Are you back with me? Um, uh, let's see, I'm going to ask Siri now. Hey Siri, generate a random number between one and fent. No, let's not do that. Hey Siri, generate a random number between one and 55 inclusive. Random. One and 55 is 28. Random number between one and 55 is 28. Let's go back to the screen share. And let's find out who number 28 is. So I'm going to scroll up. Uh, let's get the mouse back. Sorry, I've got two or three screens here. It's quite tricky. Here we are. 28 is Gillian B. Fantastic. Now, Gillian's commented a couple of times. Gillian, you have won yourself. Let's stop this. Gillian, you have won yourself a bottle of Glencadam 15. Um, so Gillian, if you would like to claim this, I wonder where you are. I hope you're in the UK because it's going to be easy to ship this to you. Um, if you're not in the UK, um, as long as you're in a country that I can ship alcohol to, uh, if you're not in a country I can ship alcohol to, we'll work together and I'll uh, maybe work with one of the other uh, channels or something to get an equivalent value prize shipped out to you that you can enjoy legally. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Well done, Gillian. Um, send your details, um, if you can, to whiskey at aquavitae.com um, or send me a direct message through Twitter, through Instagram, uh, or just give me instruction in the YouTube comments how you want to get in touch and I'll get this bottle to you. This is sold out now in most uh, retail outlets. You can still get a hold of it, but it's getting tough to get after. Um, our friend Ralphie voted it his whiskey of the year. Um, it looks like um, Whiskey Throttle has just donated 20 Canadian to me. You're a star. Thank you very much. I know that I've only just recently got in touch uh, Whiskey Throttle that we've uh, hooked up together and bumped into each other in all these places, but that's very generous and I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. Um, do the quiz and let us see you take a swig right from the bottle. Um, is that is that your super chat, Whiskey Throttle? Let me roll up, scroll up. Do the quiz and let me see you take a swig right from the bottle. Well, the, the, the swig that you're referring to was in the second recycle video I did, and it was when there was a wee bit left in a bottle of a bottle of uh, Deanston 18. Um, so, yes, I'll do the quiz and I'll take a sip from the Deanston. Fabulous. I've got the quiz here. The Whiskey Rev sent in a question, actually, that was very Burns-related. Um, 
I've not added it to this. I'd already printed that out by the times he sent it through, so I might just offer it in as a bonus or something, or perhaps a tiebreaker. Um, but super. So, Rev, who do we have? Oh, Jillian's in the chat. Are you in, Jillian? <laughs> that means I can perhaps work out. You are, Jillian. Congratulations. Well done. So tell me where you are, Jillian. She's in the chat now. Thank you again. Just don't tell, don't be specific. Just say, are you in the UK? Are you in Europe? Are you in the US? Canada? Where Where are you, Jillian? <laughs> George Kaplan is saying, wrong, Siri, wrong. <laughs> Sorry, George. Um, I hope that that's probably just about as transparent as I could do that competition thing. Um, Danny is saying, have you done any TV broadcasting work? No, I've never been on TV, Dan. Jillian is saying, so excited, thank you so much. I never won things, yay. Well, you have, you've won something tonight. I'm very pleased, Jillian. Oh, I've been having fantastic. Good. So who do we have? Jillian's in Perthshire. She's in Scotland. Shenanigans. Fix. That's wonderful because it means it's easy for me to get it to you. And you're going to get the Glen Caddam. I don't need to substitute it out for anything. Fantastic, Jillian. Superb. Lloyd Fink, I want to do the quiz. Lloyd, you would be very welcome. Fantastic. Who else? Anybody else offering to do the quiz? Uh, I go with quiz. So it looks like um, I've got a message through from my wife. It's an important message about Jillian. Um, we need somebody else to go up against Lloyd in the quiz. I wonder if we should... What about the Whiskey Rev? If we don't get any anybody else... The Whiskey Rev. You tell me, Rev, if you're willing to come in. And participate in the quiz. Um, now, the Whiskey Rev Lloyd would be quite a canny competitor, but he's not seen any of these questions. Usually, he contributes some questions or he vets my questions for me, but because of how busy he's been, he's not done any of that. So, um, Whiskey Aid gave you £10. Did I miss a super chat, Rev? I hope I didn't miss one. I mean, it's rolling past so quickly for me, but um, I know that Vin from No Nonsense Whiskey was going to moderate for a while and the Rev's been busy. I hope we've not missed anything. Ah, Whiskey, whiskey said, yes, I got that. These are messages from my wife as well, just trying to keep me on track. Somebody, Jillian is in Persia. Tony said he'd do it. I need to pop in and out. Okay, Travis Suders has volunteered. Both Tony and Travis have volunteered. Okay, good. So we've got Lloyd up against either Tony and Travis. Why don't we try and have all three of you in? Would that be stupid? Would that be silly? Um, let's try it. Let's go with it. I'm going to keep this chat up so I can watch it. Um, so this is how the quiz is going to work tonight. Because there's no delay to help us tonight, I need, you You guys are all kind of competing against each other. So please try and let me just count you down three, two, one, and enter, and you all hit enter at the same time. So when I ask a question, type in your answer, have it ready, but don't submit the answer. Don't give it away. Don't tell anybody else what the answer is in advance. Hold your water. Because, because we don't have a delay to work with a guest tonight. We're not up against a guest. It's, we've got some time. You're all on a level playing field. Hold your water. Press enter at the same time. And I will mark Lloyd. Lloyd is a fantastic guy. He, um, let me tell you a story about Lloyd. He's written a book called Hiking to Beer, which is wonderful. You can buy it on Amazon. He hosts a whiskey channel in the States called Getting Weird with the Beard. He used to be one half 
of he was the beard and Bubba in the beard. And um, Bubba's doing his own things now. He's got some other things to pursue. Lloyd is taking the channel forward on his own. But last night, Lloyd went live on Instagram playing his ukulele, which was fantastic. And he's playing away. And my, my son and I were just winding down for bedtime listening to this music. And he played a nice, gentle, slow one. Um, and it was fantastic. And I typed in the Instagram live. I said, Lloyd, we're using this as a bedtime lullaby for my son. Um, and Lloyd said, came on and said, uh, well, this is for your son. This is a lullaby. And he sang and played my six-year-old son a lullaby over Instagram on live last night. And my son was just so happy he could have burst. He couldn't believe that somebody on the internet in the States was playing a ukulele and singing a song directly to him. It was, technology is just amazing now. And it can connect you with these people that's at the other side of the world doing these fantastic things. Check out Getting Weird with the Beard. Marvel at the beard. Marvel at his magnificence. Learn about 27 Beard Co., which is his company promoting and selling uh, conditioners and balms and things like that and accessories for beard care. And get to know Lloyd because he's one of the coolest guys in the whiskey scene. He's just a dude. So Lloyd, I don't know how much he knows about scotch, though. He's a bourbon guy and he's in his cast strength bourbons. So Lloyd is up against Tony. Uh, which Tony am I looking for, by the way? Is it uh, and Travis? So Travis, Tony, and Lloyd are up against each other. So I'm going to give you a countdown for the answers. And by the way, if, if the rest of you are, that are dropping out and not enjoying the quiz, if you want to, if you're leaving now, um, I, I usually see a slight drop off when we get to the quiz, and I understand that completely. That's why I leave it till the end. I'll thank everybody for joining me tonight again. It's been another wonderful, wonderful stream had a, an absolute buzz with 111 people at its peak. Um, wonderful uh, community, Once oh, tremendous sense of support. Can't get over the donations that's come in tonight. I promise you I will find a way to share that back with you. Okay, good. Wait for the countdown. First question in the quiz. What is the brand, this is a tricky one, what is the brand of red painted malt mills familiar in many of Scotland's malt distilleries? Said to be so reliable, they bankrupted the, co the company that made them. So, so many of the mills around Scotland are painted red, they have a brand name on them, and they're, they're maintained by a guy, I think his name is Ronnie Lee, he's a famous guy in the whiskey scene, and he maintains these mills. And these mills, some of them are decades and decades and decades old. And the, and the, the folklore behind them are, it is that it's, they are so reliable that they ended up bankrupting the company that made them. So what is the brand name of these mills, these malt mills that are around the distilleries of Scotland and abroad? Three, two, one, answer. So I've got a few seconds before. They start pouring in. Rev, I'm back monitoring uh, the feedback from you as well. So if you want to keep me right on anything that you can see. Okay, I can see I'm looking for. Travis has said Porteous. Uh, James Hope has said Porteous. Everybody's coming up with question marks. Tom Harris saying no idea my final answer, fantastic. The whiskey rev is laughing at something. Wow. I think we need to give that one to Travis. Porteous is the correct answer, Travis. Well done, you. Lloyd, are you still in? Are you actually here? Are you, are you in? Raster is saying, I was just kidding with my answer. I'm not actually taking the quiz. Cool. Okay, I don't see um, a contribution from Lloyd. Rev, keep me right. And I don't see a contribution from Tony either. So what, what if you don't, uh, Lloyd is saying Ant Flo. If you don't know, just hit the question mark a couple of times and, and, and stick it in. Uh, is Tony still in, Rev? Tony, are you still here? Let me know. Um, if you're playing and uh, I'll look out for you um, and maybe you can tell me how to pronounce your surname as well uh, Lloyd did you get it right uh, close buddy but not quite 
the answer is Porteous. And they, uh, it's, you'll see these red mills. Um, they're quite fantastic pieces of kit. You'll see them everywhere. Uh, I can't remember the name of something. Bobby is the other green mill that you see around as well. Good. Let's go on to question two. Travis is the only one to get that right. Uh, okay, this one's a bit easier. Come on. I'm going to be fast here. So type in your answer and I'll give you a countdown to tell me Optic, Golden Promise, and Chalice are what exactly? Optic, Golden Promise, and Chalice are what exactly? This is the geeky bit at the end of the stream. Mm. Three, two, one, enter. Let's see them all. Lloyd Fink is saying, I saw Travis's answer, but didn't want to cheat. There you go. It's just a mark of the guy he is. Whiskey Biker is saying, grain types. Jess Batty is saying, barley. Oh, wow. It's just pouring in. <laughs> I can't even see the... It's just lit up. Travis has said, grain. Let's look for Tony. Tony is saying, I'm here. Sorry, didn't know the answer. Okay, thanks, Tony. Just I'll uh, look for your little icon popping up now. Just let me know by putting a question mark. And if you don't know, um, and what has Lloyd answered? Where's my friend Lloyd? Where have you gone, Lloyd? <laughs> Tony's saying he doesn't know. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Ah, do a quick refresh. Ah, has Lloyd got a problem with um with latency? Yeah, Lloyd, if you if you jump out and uh, jump back in again, you might find that that fixes it. Maybe you've hit the pause uh, button on the playback as well. You can pause this live and you end up, the latency is bigger than it should be. It should only be about eight or 10 seconds. Um. Okay. Travis has answered grain. Travis, I hope we don't fall out because I know that you're a superstar, but I can only give you a half a point for that. A optic, Golden Promise, and Chalice are grain, but specifically, and the question was phrased, optic, Golden Promise, and Chalice are what exactly? They are types of barley used for distilling. Um, so it was barley. I was looking. Uh, I was looking for, but barley is a grain. So yeah, a half a point for that's okay. And nobody else, I believe, was able to answer. Tony admitted he didn't know. Lloyd's a wee bit behind, so I'm hoping uh, Lloyd is now saying he refreshed, so he should be back on time. Thanks, Travis. You said no worries, superstar. Question three. This is a this is a multiple choice. So you're going to get an A B C. So it's just it's A B C ready to enter. Now this you've been helped by this by a video that was released today. I don't know if you caught this video, but this is a kind of YouTube question, or sorry, a whiskey tube question. Which two of the Scotch four dummies took a trip in 2017 to the UK and Ireland, which included a stop at Tomat? Excuse me, at Tomatin Distillery. This is when I got to meet the Scotch for Dummies. Which two of the Scotch for Dummies, which two guys, excuse me, took a trip in 2017 to the UK and Ireland, which included a stop at Tomatin Distillery? A, Drew and Mark. Sorry. A, Drew and Mark. B, Sean and Mark. C, Drew and Andrew. Three, two, one, answer. A, Drew and Mark. B, Sean and Mark. C, Drew and Andrew. Travis is saying A. Lloyd, I'm looking for Lloyd, is saying A. <laughs> Bart and Rob, <laughs> Danny, <laughs> nice one. <laughs> uh, John Paul Vanderhoven, um, nice to have you in, John Paul. Haven't seen that one yet. 
Uh, Kelted Moose is saying Drew and Mark. Malted Man Cave is saying Drew and Mark. Yes, the answer is Drew and Mark. Uh, so um, Lloyd and Travis got that correct. I'm looking for my friend Tony. Abe, but not sure. Yes, you're correct. So that's you all got a point there. I thought that would have been tricky. So you've all got that. That means that everyone's out the traps. The current score is two and a half to Travis and one apiece to Lloyd and Tony. Question four. The top three malt whiskey brands from Scotland are Macallan, Glenfiddich, and which other? Three, two, one. Enter. So the top three are Macallan, Glenfiddich, and one other. Which is it? Lloyd Fink is saying, woohoo, he's happy about getting one right. <laughs> Not sure on names from left and back right, guys. That's Connor Strang. Nice to see you, Connor. Good to see you again. It wouldn't feel like a quiz without Connor in a quiz, right? Oh, wow, I can't keep up. It's pouring in. Travis, very early, he was first in, is written Glenlivet. Wow. Let's look for Lloyd or Tony. Tony said Glenlivet. Come on, Lloyd. Am I behind again? <laughs> so Tony and Travis got that correct. Uh, Lloyd, no. Lloyd isn't a Scotch guy. Lloyd's a bourbon guy. Hmm. Okay, boys. I'm going to tell you my worthy mention, 12-year-olds as well. And the reason that this isn't in the top three isn't because it's not a great whiskey, because it's a fantastic whiskey. It's wonderful. This is Blair Athol, um, Highland Distillery. You don't really know it. Um, it. Everything that Blair Athol make tends to go into the Bell's Blend. In fact, if you do a distillery tour there, it's not really a Blair Athol tour you get. It's more of a Bell's tour. Owned by Diageo, and this is the Flora and Fauna Series 12-year-old, which is the only official bottling from Blair Athol. But it's a wonderful whiskey. The reason that it's not... And the top three is less to do with its flavour and its engagement, but more to do with the fact that the presentation could be a wee bit better. It's only 43%. Um, and yeah, they chill filter it and probably colour it as well. But don't let that detract you from the enjoyment because Blair Athol 12 is fabulous. And um, I've got another honourable mention as well, just as I open this Kilkerran. I have to open a bottle tonight after how generous you've all been. It's not like I can't replace it. Um, this Kilkerran 12 has been, get a clean glass. Oh, a nice noise, a lovely noise. Um, the other honorable mention had, was Kalila. Again, 43%, another Diageo product. Yes, chill filtered. Um, don't know about natural color, but they reserve the right to use natural color. But again, this is still one of the affordable Islas, very, very classy Isla whiskey. Love this stuff. 12 years old um, and good value as well. 40 quid, 45 quid thereabouts. And I've had a super chat in from Toon. You're a superstar. I hope, Toon, that that's a five euro donation from you in order for me to get my quiz face on and hurry this thing along and stop dilly-dallying. Thank you, my friend. You've been a stalwart and a great supporter of me on these live streams from the beginning. I love having you in. Thank you for contributing. Cheers to you. Mm. The smoke is wonderful. Oh, it's, just, it's poured fresh. It's a tight dram, straight out of the bottle, into the glass, not even had time to open up. It's already amazing. The fruit and the smoke, wonderful, wonderful whiskey. Okay, let's go on with this. Question five. This is a, another whiskey tube question. Wh which whiskey tube commentator is affectionately known by the Scotch Test Dummies and some other folk as... Amy's husband. Who is affectionately known as Amy's husband? This is quite tricky, maybe. Three, two, one, enter. Somebody mentioned a couple of weeks ago when I do the three, two, one thing, I should do a Ted Rogers three, two, one. It's a very UK specific reference there. It's about a quiz show that used to be on. 
quite a cheesy quiz show, if I'm honest. Mm. 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 Janie Mitchell, I love you. Effervescent, almost fizzy. Okay, rolling in. Jez is saying GK. Ah. <laughs> Scotch test dummies. I guess that's Scott. Nice to have you in, my friend. Superb to have you here. Hey, I'm running on again, as you can see. Um, his Scotch test dummies, George Kaplan. Connor's saying, no idea. Don't watch all of Whiskey Tube. Uh, I know, Connor, it's a wee bit tricky. I'm looking for my friends. Tony has said George Kaplan, yes. So where is Travis? Where are you, Travis? Lee, oh, close. Okay, Tony claims back a point there, but I can't find Lloyd. No idea, Lloyd say no idea. Sorry, my friend, maybe this wasn't the night. Maybe I need to do more bourbon questions to get you on board. So Travis is trips up for the first time. Um, Tony manages to get a point there. Question six, which of the following famous Scotch malt whiskies are not triple distilled? So this is an ABC, quite easy. Which of the following on this list is not a triple distilled Scotch? There are still some triple distilled expressions available from Scotland. Is it A, Hazelburn, B, Glenkinchy, or C, Ochentoshin? Hazelburn, A, B, Glenkinchy, C, Ochentoshin. Three, two, one, enter. Which is not triple distilled? Not triple distilled. B, 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 C, A. Oh, it's fast, it's fast, fast. Travis is saying B. Ooh, Lloyd is saying, I can't believe I'm so behind, but my answer is C. No, it's coming in okay, Lloyd. It's coming in okay. I'm just looking for my friend Tony. Tony, Tony. Glenn Kinchy. Glenn Kinchy is the correct answer, which was B. Glenn Kinchy is uh, twice distilled, as typical Scotch usually is. Hazel Burn is from Springbank, it's triple distilled, and Ochentoshin is uh, sometimes referred to as the Scotch-Irish whiskey, it's triple distilled as well. Glen uh, twice distilled. Uh, and they use a worm tub, I think the worm tub at Glen is on the wash still though, not the spirit still. Okay, uh, fantastic. So, one apiece, but Lloyd, unfortunately not. Lloyd answered C, Ochentoshin. Question seven, which distillery is owned by Campari Group and is said to be Italy's favourite malt. I know for a fact it is Italy's favourite malt. Which distillery is owned by Campari Group and is said to be Italy's favourite malt? It's the best-selling single malt in Italy. One of the fantastic things about it is one of the best-selling expressions of this single malt is a big, massive five on the label for five years old. If they can do it in Italy, why can't we do that here? What is the need for a non-age statement when you can boldly advertise yourself as a five-year-old and it's fine? Ben Romack did it. Glenn Grant did it. The five-year-old is usually used as a base. Three, two, one, enter. Sorry, I, I can see that perhaps I didn't give you a countdown there. Um, it's usually used as a base for mixers and things like that, but it's still fresh, clean, and engaging enough for you to actually sip it. Uh, Tony is saying... Not a bad dram for someone. I think he's talking about Glen Kinchy. And then the answers have started pulling it. Connor Strang is saying Glen Grant. Um, yeah, is saying Glen Grant. Uh, Jason. Uh, Jason Kleschult. He doesn't know. Jason, that's a new name. Fantastic to welcome you in. Um, Lloyd is saying Glen Levitt. Hey, Whiskey said Amaretto. <laughs> Whiskey Biker doesn't know. 
So where is Travis? Glenn Grant. Yes, Travis, it is Glenn Grant. And Tony, mm. quite late, but you did get Glenn Grant in there. Everybody else is putting question marks up there. Uh, and Travis, there's the saying, wild turkey is my second answer. It is Glenn Grant. So we've got Tony. Um, and Travis, you said Glenn Grant, didn't you? Yes, you did. Absolutely. Travis, I think you're killing it. I think you've kicked this out of the park uh, with three questions still to go. Question eight. Which of the following whiskey channels do not offer content in a language other than English? So which of the following channels do not offer a bilingual option or another language option? So it's ABC again. Hover over the, 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 the key and I'll give you a countdown. Is it A, Mark's Whiskey Whistle from South Korea? B, Horst Luning's Whiskey.com from Germany? C, South Africa's The Whiskey Couch? One of those channels, three, two, one, enter. Don't offer output in a language other than English. So two of these channels are have separate channels, basically. They go out in English and another domestic language. Um, one of them only goes out in English. Is it A, Mark's Whiskey Whistle, B, horselearningswhiskey.com, or C, South Africa's The Whiskey Couch? Okay, Travis is saying A, Mark's Whiskey Whistle. Uh, Whiskey Jason is saying C. Now it's funny, Whiskey Jason's answer on the question that he's actually, um, he's at, he actually features in. I'm looking for uh, Lloyd. There's Lloyd is saying B, which is horseloaningswhiskey.com from Germany. And Tony is saying a, you're, everyone's wrong. Mark's Whiskey Whistle in South Korea puts out content, believe it or not, what a guy, what a hero, in, in South Korean, and Korean, and also in English. Horse Learning, of course, does it in German and English, and South Africa's The Whiskey Couch. I should have checked this, <laughs> but I believe uh, The Whiskey Couch, uh, he's a good guy. You should go and check him out as well. Only puts out content in English. The answer I was looking for was C, and I think... Every single one of you got that one wrong. Question nine, Ian Bucks. It's quite amazing when you think about the dedication that's involved in putting just a single channel out. There are guys out there that do it in two languages. And Swami Malted in Montreal is seriously thinking about putting out French content as well. Just, just dedication. It's fabulous. Question nine, Ian Buxton's recent book, Whiskeys Galore, focuses on which genre of Scotch whiskey? I can show you this book, but I need to be careful and cover it up. See if there's any clues. There we go. Ian Buxton's Whiskey Galore, a tour of Scotland's something distilleries. Which genre? This is an ABC again, folks. Sorry. Uh, is it A, Speyside? Speyside distilleries. Is it B, Closed distilleries? or C, Island Distilleries? A, Speyside, B, Closed, C, Island. Three, two, one, enter. Jez doesn't know. Don Holland, nice to see you in, Don. Good to have you here. <laughs> Swami's in. <laughs> hey, Swami, how are you, my friend? <laughs> right, okay. Uh, people are hitting B, 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 C, C. Okay. So, uh, Russell is saying C. Tuna is saying C. Yap is saying C. Tom is saying C. Malton in Montreal, Swami is saying C. Travis is saying B. You're an important one. And Tony is saying Islanders. And I'm looking for Lloyd. A and yes. Okay, Lloyd and Travis are wrong, and Tony got it correct. It is a tour. And it's a great book so far. I'm only halfway through. But this is Ian Buxton's latest book. 
It's a tour of island distilleries. So it covers Arran, it covers Jura, it covers the island distilleries, it covers Orkney, it covers all the island distilleries, and it's a pretty damn good read. Um, well done, Tony. You're the only one that got that one right. Last question. In the USA, so Lloyd, it is an American question coming up. Finger on the buzzer. In the USA, according to its governing body, that is the Board of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, the BATF, what is the correct spelling of whiskey? So according to American legislation, what is the correct spelling of whiskey? Type in your answer, write the word whiskey spelled how you think it should be spelled in America from a legal perspective, and hit enter in three, two, one, go. That's the last question, folks. I think we know who the winner is, but this is a curious, curious question to finish on, and I'm interested to see how this lands with everyone. So, uh, Hoyt is saying whiskey with no E, with E, with, uh, Malton Montreal is saying with an E, Santa Cruz and with an E, Mark. Uh, with an E, with an E, with the ones I'm looking for. Lloyd Fink is saying with an E. Where is Danny is saying with an E? Oh, I, almost everybody is agreeing with an E. Some whiskey Jason is saying without the E. Travis is saying, oh, he's put it in brackets. Hey, cheeky bugger. Um, I'm going to assume that you've put the E in there on purpose. So you're saying with an E, Travis. Uh, Lloyd. Too right. Lloyd, where are you, my friend? With an E, sorry. So it's only Tony I couldn't find there as it's whizzed past. Tony. Is the only one that got it correct. There is no E in the legal definition of American whiskey is spelt without an E. Um... Through some politics and some controversy, um, s most distilleries chose, citing tradition, to adopt the E. But some distilleries, such as Maker's Mark, uh, George Dickel, uh, maybe some of those with kind of Scottish um, connections, uh, chose to uh, go by the legal definition. But the Board of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms in the States all through legislation spells whiskey without the E, but permits the E to be allowed uh, uh, to be used, um, citing tradition. So there you go. I think Tony is the only one that got that correct. So Tony actually rallied at the end. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, Travis, no. Lloyd, no. Oh, I wish I could hear your reactions. I can just read it. Um, in America, we do what we want. <laughs> That's right. Let's count this up. Okay, Lloyd. Lloyd. Let some. You got some correct, Lloyd. It wasn't a complete no show. Tony. Six. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Well done, Tony. Really well done. A good pass mark. Travis. Wow. I'm surprised I thought you'd kicked it out of the park. Unless I've made a mistake here, I don't think I have. Travis, you scored five and a half. So with, for no prize, there's nothing to win here. It's just for, for kudos. The winner is Tony with by half a mark. Wow. I don't know what to say. Let's see what you guys are saying. Um, Kilted Moose, hot dying. I got five out of ten as a Scotsman. I've let Robbie, bu Robbie Burns down. No, you have not, Scott. Five out of ten's a pass. Connor got nine out of ten. Connor, you're just some kind of whiskey encyclopedia. Connor, so Connor did this quiz one night and actually scored ten out of ten on this quiz. Um, a 5.5. Travis, yeah. I'll rewatch and make sure. Yeah, I, it's it's common for me to make a mistake. So let's see. You got the brand of Mill Porteous. You got a point. You got half a point for the barley. Uh, you got a point for the Scotch for Dummies visit in Scotland. Uh, you got a point for the Glenlivet. Uh, you didn't know George Kaplan. Uh, you got a point for uh, Glen Kinchy being twice distilled. Uh, you got a point for Glen Grant. 
but then you lucked out on the bilingual thing. Uh, the island distilleries was the answer I was looking for. I think you answered uh, Speyside or closed. And the last one, uh, E or no E, you didn't score. So that would be one, two, three, four, five and a half. I hope that's right. Um, if I've made any mistakes, I'll be more than happy. He's Travis is saying, just kidding, mate. It's been a great time. Thanks again. No, thank you. This is just fabulous fun. It's great to get you all together. It's great that you guys get fun out of it as well. I always feel like I come off the stream afterwards and there's so much that I've forgotten to say or I didn't make a very succinct point or get it across or something like that. But it's all kind of fun uh, and I'm enjoying it. And uh, I'd be interested in the comments. If you Before you leave, leave a comment. If you feel it's appropriate, hit the like button. Please support us. Um, and help me refine it so that in future, you know, oh no, we prefer guests or we prefer the chat or, you know, I think the quiz is going to stay now. There's enough people looking forward to it. And if I put it at the end of the stream, people can dip out and they don't need to participate in the geeky quiz at the end. The people who love it can stay for it. We're already overrunning. I'm at a two hour stream again. This is unbelievable, but I love it. I love you guys joining me. It's fantastic. Remember all the other guys that are out there, the Scotch for Dummies are going live tonight around about 9 p.m. Eastern their time. Um, remember uh, the Scotch Test Dummies, they usually have a live on a Sunday night. Swami Malted Montreal is, is doing regular live streams. There's lots of ways for you to participate. Food Quig is doing live streams. Um, uh, Vin from No Nonsense Whiskey has got a fantastic internet connection now. V Rich, my friend V Rich, um, awesome Roy superstar, has just made a donation at the last closing seconds. That's wonderful, my friend. Now, I worked out who, what your name was because we connected in the Instagram just last week, but I've forgotten. But I'll say thank you anyway. V Rich 3733, you're a star and a supporter. Thank you so much. Um, uh, yes, all the other channels are, are doing great out output. Vin is going to start doing a live stream now that he's got a decent internet connection. Um, there's lots to engage with. There's lots to support. It's a great time. Um, and there's a swell of uh, positivity. There's a huge community coming to YouTube right now. And we should just keep building that and supporting that. And it's going to be a great time to enjoy whiskey for all. Mm. Especially if it's drums like this, Cochran 12. I agree with you completely, V Rich. It's a great community here. Um, remind him to drink from the bottle. You're absolutely right. So let's try and pull this off left handed. I'll sign off now. I'll say thank you all so much for your overwhelming, literally overwhelming support. I'll say Slanchiva and until next time. Cheers.